So I brought the Stamping King with me today because we are going to show you how to do some easy fall decorating that will transition into winter and Christmas. Today we're going to be showing you how we decorate our table using some found items and greenery. We're going to be using the wonderful IOD inks and the new stamps that came out on some IKEA pillowcases. And last but not least, we're going to be restyling our dough bowl from summer to fall. We've been so busy, we haven't had a chance to use all of the new IOD stamps. I've got the Franz stamp out, and when you get your stamps out, when they're brand new, what you wanna do is season them a little bit. The reason being is they're kind of a rubbery silicone, and if you don't season them, the media, your inks and paints and things won't stick very well to the stamp. So I've got some 220 grit, this is nice and worn out, and I'm just going to lightly buff over the top of all these stamps. It doesn't take a whole lot. So I'm just gonna lightly buff over them, not so much that I'm removing the detail off the stamp, just enough to give it kind of some tooth so that the ink and paints and things we're gonna be using with these stamps stick to it well. Ooh, when you're peeling these off, don't be worried. You cannot, well I shouldn't say with a shirt, but 99.9% .9 of the time, there's no way you're gonna rip them. So just pull them off, give it a little, get a little pull. They're really sticky so that way they stay where they're supposed to. And you also wanna to not touch this side too much. And if you do, wash it off before you put it back because you can remove some of the sticky. So a lot of people like to cut these out, but we like to pull them off individually. That way we can do a layout on the flexi mount that comes with them. You can easily put them back on the mat because they've got the design of where they go. All right, so we, we're using the new IOD inks. This is new grass. It's kind of a, it's a fun dark green. And I'm just gonna load up my ink pad here and then we're gonna lighten it by adding it to some white ink. All right, so I've got it on the flexible mount. You could use an acrylic block if you want, but these are so big, I like to use the flexible mount on them. Let's be honest, you're the stamp master. I don't know about all that, but I have my ways that I like to do it, so I'm going with it. <laughs> this is the first time we've ever used the colored inks. We haven't even practiced, so I'm a little nervous, but also equally parts excited. Okay. So that's gonna go this way. <laughs> and you just, you uh, tell make me. Make sure it's up about three to four inches from the bottom because the pillow will flatten out on the bottom. So you want the design to be easily seen. Yeah, that's good right there. If you stamp down here, it gets lost because it flattens out and you don't see it. I didn't tell you guys, but we've got a piece of cardboard underneath. I haven't had problems with it seeping through, but anytime you're using paint or ink, it's always good to put that under there. And when you are stamping fabric, it's good to use a little bit more ink than you would on a painted project because you need it to be juicy. That's good there, you like that? Yeah, that's good. Doesn't have to be perfect, it has to be a little bit organic because we're using fonds, which is an organic element. Well, I think next we're gonna layer on these. Yeah, these are so detailed. I know. So I'm gonna do light on this layer and then I'll come back with dark on this layer. All right, so this ink pad has already been loaded up with the IOD white. It's This is actually the erasable chalk. They have a new white base ink that you can use for mixing, but we already have it loaded with this, so we're gonna go with it. They'll blend nicely together. Well, they might, we don't know. <laughs> no, they'll, they should blend. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of the new grass. Hopefully we get a little bit lighter green by adding the white. That way we get some contrast on our fronds. So I'm not gonna add a ton. I'm just gonna mix this in because I want it to be lighter. All right, so we can pick up this here. Are you gonna do both? Yeah, because I have these laid out the way I want them, I'm just gonna use the mat to pick up the design I've already laid out so I know that it'll go in the exact right spot. Well, when I say I, I mean Zeb. <laughs> It's a, it's a group effort. Oh, that's gonna be a nice kind of creamy green. Yeah, a little variation in tone there. We'll never be able to create it again. <laughs> no, it's a one one time deal. All right, you tell me. So this needs to be level with that one there, kind of an angle, perfect. Angle like that? Yeah. Yes. It's much lighter, but I like it. Looks so good. Well, this is just in the background because then we'll come in with dark over the top and then maybe some black. So this side will pick up just like that. So you see kind of how that's laid over? That's how that needs to go. Yep. Kind 
Kind of like that? Yep. Or more? Nope, of... the way you had it. Perfect, okay. So this, we're gonna go dark. And we're gonna layer those in like that. So just pick those up like that and put the dark layer on. And then these will all be done um, in black. So right like this? Yes. Yay, okay. So next we're coming in with our black and I'm just layering in the little teeny tiny pieces. I've used almost every part of this frond stamp. And this part is just gonna go, does that look centered? It's gonna go right in the middle. Hopefully this doesn't look too garish because it's so dark. What do you think? I think it's going to be okay. <laughs> well, Because we'll it turns out kind of grayish. All right, so this is the last layer. It's going on top. Right there? Yeah, that's good. It's going to lightly press so we don't go too dark with it. Yeah. <sighs> Perfect. Okay. So I'm thinking, let me look at it. I want to add a little bit more black here and there. We decided to add one more layer and we're gonna do this in black as well. And we're just gonna fill in those sides. The mat really does help because you can like lay down each layer and pick it up and then you know it's gonna be in the exact right spot. The next time you see us stamping, we will be showing you the masking technique. We haven't mastered it yet, but you can actually do a similar effect and then not have the layers over the top of each other. It's a little bit cleaner, um, but we haven't practiced it. So we're doing this the way we know and next time we'll show you some masking. We're not gonna get to it in this video, but you have to wait 24 hours. Then you use an iron for about 20 seconds over the whole piece in a setting that is appropriate for your fabric. That will make it so you can wash your piece. We're using the Ikea insert, it's down, and for about $10, you can pick up the case and the insert. They're always my favorite because I am a pillow chopper. Are you a pillow chopper? I feel like you're a pillow flopper. You like to flop them on the floor. I like to throw them off of wherever I plan on sitting because they're in the way. Okay, now here comes into play what I told you about the positioning of your stamps. Remember I said don't stamp down here? Look, when you set this down on a flat surface like your couch, you lose that bottom part. Plus when you do that chop, you lose this top part. So you want your image to be right there in the sweet spot. So if you saw my spring, summer, I can't even remember which season it was video, you remember that I bought these Ikea lemons. Some of them have been used as weapons they haven't fared so well, but the rest are doing good. It's time to put these away until the weather gets warm again. Frederick and Jack love to get in here and play with them. <laughs> Nothing's too precious at this house. I like to leave these leaves, the lambs ear and the flowers in year round. I just kind of change what's in the middle. It keeps it simple and I'm not having to store a bunch of stuff that I don't need. So these lambs ear sprigs, I don't even know what you call them, are from Hobby Lobby, you can also pick them up at Michael's. These white flowers are from Ikea. They're some of my favorites. I like to buy them in white and pink. And I purchased these bags of cotton and pine cones for 70% off at Michael's. So if you have a Michael's close by, check them out because they wound up costing me, let me do the math, $2 and I don't know, 10 cents or something? $2.10 if my math's correct. Originally seven. Somebody's gonna see this and do the math and we all run. Anyways, I'm just gonna dump these in here. I bought a bunch of them, way more than I need because I'll probably use them in the shop. I like the white fluffy cotton because it works okay for fall, but also is a loose, you know, lose itself to snow, which we know is coming. It's coming, coming soon. Oh, man. I'm ready for it. I always enjoy I'm winter. Ready. By the time we're into February, I'm like, okay, I'm over it. But you know, the first few snowstorms, I'm like, yes, no. January 1 and I'm done. If you guys probably watched my videos at the beginning of last year, January 1, I'm like putting fresh flowers in my house and trying to bring on spring. I always like to buy a little <laughs> more than I think I'm gonna need because nothing's worse than starting a project and not having enough. 
And you can use it for other stuff. Yeah, I'll just take it to the shop. Okay, so we've got our cotton kind of organized in here. Now to make this a little bit more fall, I found these pumpkins at the grocery oh, store. These are real pumpkins. These are real. I prefer real because I feel like the fake ones, well, they look fake. Although you can't use them year after year. So these are one and done. That's all right. They'll keep all through like the whole season. Sure. All right. What, is, that, is that too much over here? Okay. Done. Done. That Fall was slash winter tablescape finished. What is going on the coffee table? Oh, coffee table. Yeah. Our third and final project is our tablescape for my dining table. I picked these up in the Paris flea market when we were there last week. They are copper candlesticks. They were originally, he asked 20. I came down to 10, he said no. Then he came to 18 and I walked away. And then I realized I didn't have any money, so I had to ask my dear friend Sarah if she would loan me some money. And then we said 15 and we went like this. Now it's probably the dumbest face in the world, but then they took 15, so. $15 candlesticks from Paris. So these are just tapers from the dollar store maybe. I like to have my candles drippy. I don't light them that often, but I like to have some drip on them so they're not so stark. So we're gonna just let these burn. It's melting the bottom so they stick. They'll give us some ambiance where we're doing the rest of our crafting. That's what we need while we craft. Maybe if we have these on the dining table, you'll cook me a candlelit dinner, yeah? Ooh, that's a tough one. Candlelit takeout? <laughs> candlelit takeout. It's <laughs> more our life. I have two bunches of greenery. I don't know that I'm gonna need both, but just like with the pine cones, you'd never wanna run out mid project. So let's open this one first, because it's my favorite. I just picked these up at my local grocery store. Most places that sell flowers do have greenery. You can also get them at Costco or wherever. I usually purchase mine at Harmon's. So the way I like to do this is I'm gonna lay out my bottles. I will cut all of my foliage the way that I want it. Then we'll fill them with water carefully because they have little tiny holes, some of them. Then we'll put the greenery back in. All right, can you look at that from the front and see if that looks like not too precious, but symmetrical? I don't know what you mean by too precious. You know, when it's all perfect. Yeah, I mean, it looks okay. It looks so okay. good. <laughs> You're really helpful. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and place these in here and then I'll cut them how I want them. All right, let's cut these and then we'll do the little ones up front. So you just want them until the leaves are down at the bottom, right? Yep. And this is just gonna have to be a little less. So I almost didn't get fall decor put in the house, but I decided we've got Debbie coming next week and I really love to just change with the seasons because seasonal changes are just comforting to me. Comment below if you haven't got your fall decor up yet this year and let me know that I'm not alone. So when doing the stamping, we hope we are able to show how easy it actually is. Jamie always says I'm the expert. I'm not that great at it. There are a lot of people that are really, really good, but we're able to get pretty good results because the products are so great. You're much more patient with a more steady hand, and I like to do the layout, so together it works for us. It's a creative way to take a normal plain pillowcase or tablecloth and change it up seasonally without spending a lot of money. Be sure to hit up jamierayvintage.com for the products used today, and if you like this video, share it with your friends, give us a thumbs up, and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. Hit the subscribe button.